Hi guys, this is Tinro. Welcome back to Science Exploration Adventure. Here you can see I've got two crafts that are built out of the same exact parts and they both have the center of lift behind the center of mass for the entire duration of the flight. You can probably guess which one is going to fly better. The reason I'm showing this is because without stability assist, which is a pilot or a probe core's ability to maintain course corrections and stay towards where you're aiming on the nav ball, I've I found it's kind of difficult without heavy mass parts that I can put on the front of my rockets or aerodynamic nose cones that I don't have unlocked yet to make rockets that fly really well unless I build them correctly. One of the later versions of Kerbal Space Program changed the way the fuel flow works so fuel is drawn through parts and all available tanks evenly which isn't what I want because the only mass parts that I have right now are my fuel tanks. And if it's drawing fuel from the front of my craft, I'll end up with a lot of instability like what you can see on the right-hand side where the drag is hitting the front of my rocket and the center of mass is kind of in the middle. It'll cause a lot of a wobble. So the one on the left is kind of like a dart. I have three tanks that are locked at the very front, a long column pushing the drag way in the back like the fins of a dart. And you can see that it flies a lot more smoothly. Now the way the fuel flow works is you can set the priority for which ones you want to drain first. So I can have the ones on the back be higher than the ones in the center. And I can just shift that all that I want so that it drains from the bottom up. And you can see that the craft on the right, it's not only wobbly but at some point it just loses all ability to maintain control whatsoever. I also had some problems with Kerbal construction time uh, recovering my craft. As you can see if I recover a craft with Kerbal construction time it does not maintain any staging. Lesson learned. Also if I recover a craft it keeps the same fuel and all aspects of the craft. Lesson learned yet again. For some reason, I had assumed that part of the recovery process was a reconditioning process, but the reality is that's not how it works. You can actually edit the craft with this little asterisk, so I can go to edit, and it'll pull up the current cost of the craft in the vehicle assembly building or space plane hangar. And anytime I add or remove something, it will add some build time to make those changes. But if I add things, I'll only pay for those additional funds and I can actually take things away and I will get those funds back. So this is how I would increase the charge on a vessel or refuel it, or I can also set the staging again. So it just means I need to do this. Using the gimbling engines that I unlocked at the end of the first episode, one of the best places that I wanted to go was I figured I'd just aim over toward that mountain range. You can see that uh, swiveling around, it's not that smooth, but I'm able to get a sense of control over where I want my vessel to go. So there's not a lot of fuel on this, so it's not going to go very far. And it turns out that I was hoping to get enough lift to go onto the other side of the mountain range, but I wasn't going that fast. So wobbling around, setting this parachute, it looks like I'm going to land on just the edge of this mountain. And so hopefully nothing bad happens, don't explode or anything like that. But we'll just ease in with the time warp and slowly fall onto the edge of this mountain and see what kind of science I can get from it. I'm getting ready to use experiment tracker to grab any science I have in case I roll off into the water because I don't want water science right now. Atmospheric pressure scan from Gale's volcano. The atmosphere becomes tense, then your intensity intensifies with it. I 
I didn't realize this was a volcano. But upon closer inspection, it does look like a volcano. So I'll have to come back and visit that with even more experiments. And I want to land inside. I, I don't know if there would be a different biome there. But it will be worth trying to at least get more science from there. The other easy option for science is, of course, just to take this tiny craft and launch it off the side of the island. The water is all around, and I don't need to go too far to get it. Just want to make sure that I get enough lift that I float over the edge of the island. And I don't want to explode, so I'll change my parachute's deployment height. Now that water actually looks it looks pretty nice. I like it. It's only 2.4 science, but every little bit matters at this point. Kind of wish I would bob up and down with the water. That would be cool. Having only the barometer it really limits the amount of science I can get, so I'm going to go unlock the thermometer next. And I'll get this contract to escape the atmosphere, one of the later one of my last two tutorial contracts and then I'll just warp through everything so that I can unlock my tech now this is the craft that I'm testing I'm trying to use stage recovery to help me calculate how many parachutes I will need when my fuel tanks are empty it seems to work pretty well with the stack chutes but as soon as I put on an additional parachute with a radial chute like you can see it says I'm going to do 15.8. If I take off that parachute, it says I'll do 7.1. So that's kind of backwards. I should go slower with one more shoot. I'll do a quick simulation with this. This is not anywhere near as aerodynamic as the dart that I had at the beginning of the video. But I do have to keep an eye on my part count. I'll need to have experiments to collect science that I wasn't really doing just in that visualization earlier. And here's what I ended up with. It's taller. I'm hoping to get into space, just the edge of space, and then fall back down. I figured I'd launch at night so you can see the light on the engines. And occasionally, if you do launch at night, you can see some interesting solar phenomenon on the edge of the horizon kind of like you can see now except for that's not as pretty as I was hoping to capture and this rocket is not very stable I'm getting a whole whole lot of wobble and yeah it's it's hard to control with just the gimbling engines and I'll flip over so I'll turn off my engines I was hoping I'd flip back around so I could fire my engines again and just keep going up. But it looks like I'm going to actually have to fire my engines and use the gimbal to reorient myself. At this point, I'm just burning fuel to get more lift. All I really care about now, since it doesn't look like I'm going to make it to space, is getting science from the upper atmosphere, which I am in now. If you're not familiar with it, the uh, atmosphere bar on the top is under the numbers for my height. You can see there's the light blue, the dark blue, the darker blue, and then eventually space in the black. So I'm only going to get up to about 25,000, so I'll just collect the science from here. Get some atmosphere and some temperature. And all of my temperature experiments are going to be new so I'll be able to get that from wherever I land as well as just flying above Gale alright deploy my chutes around a thousand and it looks like I'm over a mountain that I can't see because it's dark so maybe that's a reason why you also shouldn't launch rockets at night especially if you don't have lights which I don't right now But I was able to get new science from there, so I can uh, unlock some new engines, decouplers, which are awesome, and bigger fuel tanks. So I'll be able to do more with fewer parts. Also, electronics cost six. 
I don't have 21 science, so I'll just go with the rocketry first. And then, ooh, man exploration, command pods, 50 science. That might be hard to get. All these others, ooh, 95? That's a lot of science. But before I fast forward to unlock that tech, I think that I'll make a simple craft where I can get an EVA report with Bob, my resident scientist, with uh, the thermometer on the launch pad. I don't think I've collected launch pad science for that. So I'll just make this craft so that it can be built well. I'm also waiting for my science to unlock. It doesn't have a probe core and it doesn't have a command pod, so I can't collect science like that. But I can EVA Bob, and then he can run the experiment from outside. And it's only worth 1.2 science. I can process it in the lab. That's not something I know how to do, but it needs science, and I don't want it on the launch pad, so I'll have to look into that later. So he'll just take that. I don't have any barometer information that I can get because I've already done this. And then he can do an EVA report, so I can get a Kerbal's view of the situation from the launch pad. Another 1.2 science. And can he get a, a surface sample of the launch pad? No. That's something that I'll have to unlock from one of the space center buildings with additional funds. So I'll just recover Bob and this vessel with all the science that I got. It's only 2.4 science, but now I have 7 science. So I can unlock the electronics. This is something I'm going to need if I'm going to have my probe in the in orbit for longer periods of time. Alright, so I want the tank with the most amount of fuel. It looks like that's going to be this KW rocketry one. With 108 liquid fuel instead of 90. So I'll just stick that on the bottom of this probe core. And what do I have for engines? The Vesta. The Vesta is a vehicle that has a high vacuum engine ISP, specific impulse. That means that the higher the ISP, the more efficient the engine is. For the same amount of fuel cost, you'll be generating more thrust. So in a vacuum or without atmosphere, this top part will be more efficient than if I tried launching it from here on the surface. So I'll put that at the top. These decouplers, I like the low profile, but it weighs significantly more than this standard one. So I'll unlock the standard decoupler and stick it at the bottom. Now what this means is this is going to basically break my rocket in half with the small explosive charge that pushes the bottom away from the top. So I can shed the weight of the earlier stage that I used to get up wherever I am when I shed it so that I don't have to carry it around and I can just keep going on. Three tanks, I, th I think I'll put a fourth one down here. And then engines, the LV T45 swivel does have some gimbal. I'm gonna want gimbal because I need to pitch over in order to get to orbit because if I just went straight up, I'd fall straight back down. And so I need to get a lot of speed around Gale in order to get into orbit. It looks like one of these has more speed and one of them has a larger gimbal range. Three degrees vectoring on this one, six degrees on the other, but this one goes slower. I think I'll unlock the one with the larger gimbal. And you can see that my potential delta V is almost 5,000 if I were in a vacuum. You should only need 3,000 based off of the delta V chart in order to get into orbit for Gale. But since I don't have a lot of the control components to efficiently pilot, I'm going to be overshooting quite a lot. But this looks like it should go to orbit. I'll mess around with the center mass here. That changes. And then add some batteries so that I can make it home. And then, of course, science. I need to get some experiments on there. 
Perpetual Falling Machine, Mark 1. Almost forgot that parachute. Just do a quick simulation to see how well I'm able to turn this craft. So in order to get into orbit, basically what you want to do is you want to pitch over to the east, so you're going with the rotation of the planet. And you can see on my navigation ball, there's a green circle that represents my prograde marker. That's essentially the direction I'm facing. So I want to be able to move that over to the side, but I don't want to move my direction too far outside of the prograde because that would mean that my rocket is tipped more offset than the direction I'm going, which would be exposing more of my rocket to aerodynamic forces that aren't in the direction my uh, rocket is pointing. So this is the actual rocket. I'll just launch this guy up. Now I love engineer because I can look at my apoapsis height, my time to apoapsis, and all those details. It helps me fly just by looking at the numbers. So what I'm trying to do is push my time to apoapsis up so that it continues to increase, meaning I'm going higher, but I can still start pitching over in the 90 degrees to the east because I want to be able to start picking up some horizontal speed as well but I don't want to start falling so I want to be able to be going faster both up and to the side so I'm going to try to get my time to apoapsis around 40 seconds and then start nudging my prograde further toward the horizon And you can see that I've got a lot of back and forth wobble. I think it's because uh, the gimbal nudges one way and then the aerodynamic forces from my tail fins nudge it back the other. So it's just a little bit of back and forth until I am able to get this off the side. I'll jettison that. And now I have my more efficient engine and I weigh very little. So the amount of vectoring gimbal that I have from this engine is probably a little powerful for this tiny craft. You can see. I'm overshooting just by nudging, trying to stay in my prograde marker. I'm trying to lift my apoapsis height right now. It's 57K. I like to get it up above 70 because that is the edge of the atmosphere. You can see my time to apoapsis is over two minutes. So I could have efficiently stopped a long time ago and waited until I got closer towards my prograde. You can see I'm also spinning out of control as soon as I turn off my engines. If I had... RCS thrusters or reaction wheels, I'd be able to maintain my position and adjust my direction a lot more easily. But now I'm going to wait until I get to my apoapsis to fire so that at the height of my... Because essentially at the top before I start falling, that'll be the most efficient place to speed up and make it so that I push out how far I'm going. So you can see this is kind of skewed. My apoapsis is a lot higher than my periapsis. The best place to push out my periapsis is actually from the opposite side where my apoapsis is. So let's look. I got Escape the Atmosphere so I can also pick up Orbit Gale since I'm going to be doing that shortly anyway. And I'm in space now at 90,000 meters so I can get some temperature data as well as some atmospheric data or some uh, pressure data. Now some people think that if you get into space there's no gravity in space but that's not actually the case. Uh, astronauts in the International Space Station actually weigh about 90% of what they would on Earth. The reason they have this sense of no gravity is because they're in free fall. Being in orbit if you look at these lines around here, it just means that the curvature for my fall is beyond the curvature of the planet. So essentially, I'm just falling around Gale forever. That's why I named this the Perpetual Falling Machine. 
because I'm still impacted by the gravity of the planet, but I'm going so fast around it that it just pulls the curvature down. And I want to land on the light side, so I'm going to head over this way before I start slowing down. And I'm bringing my periapsis down into the atmosphere. I'll probably stop around 30, 34,000. That should be enough for me to start uh, to get me into the planet. And then I'll time warp through this. I still have some fuel left too. Re-entry burn going on. It looks like those are my batteries. I would be kind of sad if some of my experiments blew up. So hopefully nothing too drastic happens. You can see I've got a giant plasma fireball. I do have particle re-entry effects as one of my mods. I think I like that it uh, adds that. It helps a lot. and then drastically slowing down as they get to the deeper part of the atmosphere. Now, the engine that I have isn't super efficient here in the atmosphere, but it's more than enough power to help slow me down. So I might not even need a parachute. I'm going to use it anyway. Midlands is also a new biome that I haven't been to, so that'll be even more science that is new. And then I'll just slowly settle down. And fall over because that's what rockets do until you get landing legs, which I'm not sure where they are. Atmospheric pressure scan from the Midlands. And temperature scan from the Midlands. But a good day for science. Recover this vessel. All right, 18 science earned, so I've got 24 science. That'll unlock a few parts. Mission Control has no more tutorial contracts for me. I'm not sure if there will be any more. The administration building has some interesting programs that I can get. IOTA is the first moon I want to go to. It looks like to get that contract, I have to return an actual Kerbal. So maybe I'll try to do that in the next episode. I do want to do I don't have a, a good way to get a Kerbal into space though but thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you in the next one